بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته وان شاء الله هنبتدي مجموعه جديده من اليوروبيان سوسايتي اوف فاسكولار سيرجري جايد لاينز اند وي ويل ديسكاس ذا جايد لاينز فور مانجمنت اوف ديسيندنج ثراسيك اورتا ديزيزز اند ان ذا بيجينينج وي ار جوينج تو توك اباوت جنرال اسبيكتس ذا نورمال ديسيندنج ثراسيك اورتا اناتومي اند هيستولوجي اند وات اباوت ذا ابيديميولوجي اوف ديسيندنج ثراسيك اورتيك ديزيز diagnostic methods in descending thoracic aortic disease and in neurological complications prevention and management about the normal descending thoracic aorta it actually starts from the uh, isthmus or originates from the isthmus and the isthmus is the region between the left subclavian artery and the ductus uh, arteriosus The descending thoracic aorta runs in the left paraspinal location until its distal segment where it passes anteriorly through the diaphragmatic aortic hiatus and inferiorly into the abdomen. Important aortic side branches originating from the descending thoracic aorta include the intercostal arteries, spinal arteries and bronchial arteries. The normal diameter of the mid descending aorta ranges from 24 to 29 in men and 24 to 26 in women and when um, it descends downward it actually get a little bit uh, smaller so at the level of the diaphragm the normal diameter is from 24 to 27 mm in men 23 to 24 mm in women aortic diameter is influenced by age and body mass uh, index The aortic wall is composed of the normal three arterial layers which are the intima, media and venticia. And as we know the intima is the innermost layer and it consists of endothelial monolayer and an internal elastic lamina. Because it is in direct contact with the blood, the function of the intima is to prevent the thrombosis and atherosclerosis. Its antithrombotic and anti-atherosclerotic function can be reduced by the risk factors, which are smoking, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, diabetes, direct trauma, each making patients more prone to aortic disease. The media, which is the next layer after the intima, consists of concentric layers of elastin and collagen and smooth muscle cells. These components responsible for the aortic wall elasticity which accommodates the changes in the stroke volume during the cardiac cycle and in a very important um, uh, function it actually converts the uh, pulsatile inflow into a smoother outflow which is called the Windkessel function which is the German uh, word for air chamber function and I will leave uh, to you the link of um, a wonderful video to show Uh, this wind kissel uh, function and to understand how the wind kissel function works to maintain the uh, flow through the cardiac uh, cycle by the aortic elasticity and it actually maintains the integrity of the uh, aortic wall these smooth muscle cells the uh, elastin fibers and the collagen fibers all of them has two functions accommodate the changes of the stroke volume during the cardiac cycle and maintain the integrity of the aortic wall. Congenital or hereditary disorders actually as by cusp valve, Marfan syndrome, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome and risk factors such as the hypertension, atherosclerosis and trauma all influence the aortic wall function. And these conditions by time can stiffen the aortic wall, decreasing its ability to accommodate the stroke volume, resulting in a systemic hypertension or weakening of the aortic wall, leading to dilatation or a dissection. Then the next layer, which is the adventitia and the outermost layer of the aortic wall, is composed mainly of collagen fibers and external elastic lamina and small vessels, which is the vas of azorum, which is responsible for nutrition of the large aortic wall, which provides the blood supply to the aortic wall and the surrounding nerves. About the epidemiology of descending thoracic aortic disease and in descending thoracic aortic disease we are going to talk about a broad spectrum of diseases such as acute aortic syndrome, the um, aneurysmal dilatation and the aortic coarctation. Distal thoracic aortic diseases consist of a broad spectrum of either degenerative, structural, 
acquired genetic and traumatic disorders. The true incidence of descending thoracic aortic pathology remains unclear, but epidemiological studies are scarce in this area, and it is likely uh, that many distal thoracic aortic disease related deaths are attributed to other cardiovascular diseases. Therefore, actually, the overall incidence of distal thoracic aortic disease is likely to be underestimated. The pathophysiology of thoracic aortic disease is believed to be a multifactorial, resulting uh, both from genetic susceptibility and environmental exposure. The incidence of the different thoracic aortic disease, as we will see, can vary significantly among different population groups. When we talk about the acute aortic syndrome, we actually talk about three uh, interrelated diseases, which are aortic dissection, penetrating aortic ulcer, and intramural hematoma. And as regards the dissection, when we talk about the descending thoracic aorta, we talk about type B aortic dissection. Type B aortic dissection most commonly affect male patient and has an incidence between 2.9 and 4 per 100,000 person years. The incidence of type B aortic dissection seem to be increasing. This increase is probably caused by increasing in the age of the population and improving diagnostic modalities. The exact incidence also remains unknown for the type B aortic dissection. But Penetrating aortic ulcer has been diagnosed with increasing frequency because, again, of the widespread of the use of advanced cross-sectional imaging techniques. In symptomatic patients suspected of um, aortic, acute aortic syndrome, uh, they found that the prevalence of penetrating aortic ulcer uh, is 2.3 to 7.6, and the lesion is localized in the uh, distal thoracic aorta in 90% of patients. In intramural hematoma, it may be related to a penetrating aortic ulcer, and we will say, and we will see also the difference between uh, both of them, uh, or the three of them, the dissection, the intramural hematoma, and the penetrating aortic ulcer. And in intramural hematoma, it accounts for five to twenty percent in patients with uh, acute aortic syndrome, and more commonly, again, involves the distal thoracic aorta in 60% of patients than the uh, ascending aorta. And um, we can see here in this beautiful uh, diagram the difference between the three um, uh, definitions, dissection, intramural hematoma, and penetrating ulcer. Here in dissection, there is an intimal uh, flap which allow the blood actually to flow within the media layers or within the layers of the artery, creating a true lumen and a false lumen. And in intramural uh, hematoma, as we will define later, it is a collection of blood within the media with no connection to the luminal uh, blood. And um, actually, rupture of vasa vasora may be the pathophysiology of intramural uh, hematoma or a thrombosed dissection that happened and there is no obvious intimal tear in uh, the CT angiography of the patient. What about the penetrating ulcer? It is actually an ulceration of the layers of the aortic wall but with um, stable or with an unaffected adventitial layer. So not all the layers of the artery are affected, but the uh, intima and the medial layers of the artery are affected and it is filled with contrast and connected to the aortic lumen. What about the blunt aortic injury? It is another entity of distal thoracic aortic diseases and it is the second leading cause of death in these patients. And although it occurs in less than 1% of all motor vehicle accidents, but it accounts for 16% of all traumatic deaths. What about the aneurysmal dilatation of the distal thoracic aorta? It is actually a degenerative disease with an estimated incidence of 6 to 10.4 per 100,000 person years. The incidence seems to be increasing with aging of the general population and continually improving diagnostic modalities. What about the aortitis? It is another entity of distal thoracic aortic diseases. It is a relatively uncommon disorder with a broad spectrum of clinical features. 
And the most common autoimmune disorders affecting the distal thoracic aorta are Takayasu arthritis, giant cell arthritis, and Behcet's disease. In Takayasu arthritis, there is actually a 9 to uh, 1 female to male predominance. As we know, also the disease has a worldwide distribution. It appears to occur more frequently in Asian women. And what about the, uh, the giant cell arthritis? Is the most common type of vasculitis observed in patients older than 50 years predominantly observed in populations of Scandinavian descent and it has a reported prevalence that varies between 1 and 30 per 100,000 people years. The male to female ratio in giant cell arthritis is actually 2.5 to 1 and is highly dependent on the geographic and genetic parameters. And about the Bessette's disease has been observed most commonly along the classic cell route with a big prevalence in Turkey of 80 to 37 to uh, 370 per uh, 100,000 people compared with 1 to 3 per million people in the Western world. And presentation is typically in the third to fifth decade of life and both genders are affected equally. So, in this category of um, our titis, uh, diseases or the broad spectrum of our titis, we discussed uh, three diseases. It is very important to know the uh, predominance of a male uh, to uh, a female and to know the um, age of affection. So, in Takayasu uh, arthritis, young women, young Asian women, Giant cell arthritis older than 50 with the male predominance rather than female predominance and the Bessette's disease in the cell root, especially in Turkey and with equal predominance uh, in both genders. What about the coarctation of aorta? Actually, coarctation of aorta is a congenital cardiovascular defect, most commonly occurring at the level of the uh, isthmus and as we said, Isthmus is the region between the left subclavian artery and the ductus uh, arteriosus. And the overall incidence ranges between 20 and 60 per 100,000 births in years with a slight male predominance. Again, this is another disease with a male predominance as the giant cell arthritis. Patients with Turner syndrome are more commonly uh, affected. And Turner syndrome is actually a genetic uh, uh, syndrome.